morning, everyone. I'm Bill Ren from Huawei. I'm glad to be here to share with you my thought about uh, future network evolution. So the short video just now gave the title of my speech, Accelerating the Autonomous Driving Network While Industry Collaboration. To talk about autonomous driving, so first, let's have a look at the history of automotive industry. <coughs> so in 1885, the Benz Motorwagen, the first car with the framework. In 1958, the Saab G750, the first car with the seat belt. And uh, in 1978, the Cadillac Civil, the first car with the electronic control unit. And in 1999, Mercedes-Benz, the S-Class W220, the first car used adaptive cruise. So the first 100 years, the car industry improved in a continuous curve and uh, focused on the traditional challenges like uh, the performance of the engine, the, the driver safety, and the fuel efficiency, and et cetera. But for the past 20 years, some new players started to pay attention for some new challenges, like global navigation, high-definition maps, and uh, identify the environment dynamically. So by last year, December, the Wimo One commercial usage stands for the autonomous driving has arrived. So by dealing with these new challenges, we clearly see a paradigm shift in architecture and the ecosystem. So look at Look at the history of uh, telco with an even longer uh, history. So we also have traditional challenges to, to deal with, like uh, capacity power consumption. So we have, but for what's the next 10 years, we have reason to ask ourselves, why not autonomous driving networks? Do we have new challenges to deal with? Do we still do continuous co-improvement or paradigm shift? So maybe we should ask first, why autonomous driving network? So on one hand, the network complexity will continuously increase. By the network scale will reach to 75 billion devices by 2025. And the, the SDNFA uh, technology will be deployed on large scale, and the marketing space will be expected 100 billion. And on the other hand, the cost of the network operating and the maintenance is huge. The efficiency of the carrier is 100 times lower than OTT players in some extent, and uh, the growth of the OPEX is much faster than the revenue in the past 10 years. And at the same time, the global digitalization or the transformation has uh, offered huge opportunities to the network. The marketing space of ICT digitalization is expected 5 trillion, and uh, Marketing space for di uh, manufacturer digitalization is 6.4 trillion. By 2029, the ratio of IT and the application move to cloud will be increased from 25% to 95%. So all this means we have new challenges to take care of. So like uh, opening this, intent driven, and self-healing, big data automation, and all those requires paradigm shift in architecture and ecosystem. So first, let's look at the paradigm shift of architecture. A typical autonomous driving uh, schema will be abstracted as a three-layered closed-loop architecture. So at the bottom is a car, which need to add a large number of sensors. In the middle is automation layer, which contains automation control platform and big data analysis platform. The result of the analysis will directly drive the control platform to, control, to achieve this automation. And the top is the cloud AI platform, which contains the global uh, data and uh, have the AI model training and the inference capabilities. We can see the architecture shift from product-centric to platform-centric. So similarly, for the auto Autonomous driving network architecture, referring to this three-layered closed-loop architecture, we should also add automation platform and AI platform above these uh, network elements. So all those platforms are supposed to be public and uh, uh, open. So how to build this? Obviously, open source 
is the best way or effective way to build it. So refer to this architecture for autonomous driving network. The open source community should uh, build a common vision and uh, framework to drive the industry to work together. So like uh, this Acumus for this cloud AI uh, platform, ONAP for the automation platform, ONAP and uh, Panda for this analysis platform, and uh, uh, Acrino, Fido, OpenMFA to build and operate this uh, optimized uh, uh, infrastructure. So we can see we have a full stack community to be leveraged. So refer to the maturity level of autonomous driving. Here we would like to give some definition and the details of autonomous driving network. So from top, bottom up, uh, we can see the scenarios from deployment and uh, service provisioning to network optimization, planning, and design. From left to right, step by step, all the manual work will be replaced by the uh, AI robots to achieve from level two, partially autonomous driving, all the way to the level four, uh, level five, hi highly and fully autonomous driving experience. So compared to the car, most above level four already, so the network is still in level two uh, today. So why the network is lagging behind? So we have to talk about an, another paradigm shift. So this is a paradigm shift of ecosystem. Why autonomous driving develops so fast? The rich ecosystem on the left gives a reason. So there are not only traditional car manufacturers, transport operators, but also technology providers to the autonomous driving platform in the, in the middle, in the between. So many internet companies have provided those uh, technologies needed for those uh, automation platform. So therefore, for the car industry has entered a cross-industry open innovation and collaboration mode from a single industry. So look at the ecosystem for the telco industry. Apart from operator and uh, uh, vendors, there it's lack of uh, technology providers uh, for the automation platform in, in the middle. So there is no single company could offer all those technologies of the automation. So how to embrace the new technology and how to build this rich ecosystem? Again, the community of the open source maybe is an effective way, but the community and the uh, the, its pattern also need a paradigm shift. So firstly, the open source community need to do more than com share the code and build a common WinF marketplace and also do the certification program. Secondly, in addition to the traditional operator and the windows, it's necessary to introduce uh, some OTT players and uh, uh, vertical uh, industries to share the AI technology software capabilities and the industry knowledge, and to achieve a better cloud and network experience. So to accelerate the autonomous driving network, I call for vendors, operators, and the community to act. So for vendors, of course, it's better to add more uh, scenarios and use cases to the community to define the new challenge and the architecture together. So Swisscom, Huawei, and Nokia build this broadband service orchestration with ONAP. So it's a good example. It's, I encourage you to visit our booth for more detail. For operators to speed up ONAP deployment to issue ONAP-related FP. So Orange and Huawei has jointly verified this ONAP-based uh, orchestration service with SD1 SD in your commercial environment. So welcome to you attend this track session tomorrow. And for communities, we should jointly build this uh, ONAP-based WNF marketplace. So Huawei has invested in a testing framework in OVP program. So I, I encourage you to visit our boss for more, for more detail. So finally, uh, as a summary, so we have new challenges to deal with. We, we should deal with openness and the intelligence beyond the efficiency. So new paradigm shift to build this uh, platform and ecosystem beyond the products. So new collaboration is needed 
a joint uh, vision and cross-industry collaboration beyond a single community. So a well, final thought about uh, what matters in the journey of uh, open source and uh, in the past uh, years, what we learned. So one, first, the open or close is uh, just a means. It doesn't matter at the end. It matters is the extreme experience you could bring to your end user. Second, the open is not an attitude, it's a capability. So it doesn't matter you like it or not. It doesn't matter you claim the open or not. It matters you could leverage it or not. So the third, I strongly believe we as an industry should work together and could have the capability to leverage the full stack open source community to achieve, to build, and to accelerate in this autonomous driving network. Thank you.